nuggets up, you little nuggets. Okay, so today is the day after the uh, vice presidential debate. Uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit and also uh, started a diet. My wife started a diet. So she went on to, we both started a diet. She went on to uh, this thing called RFO, uh, which is risk factor obesity. She's not obese. <laughs> I am, obviously, but she's not. Um, but it's this thing they do at UCLA. It's like this weight management program where um, you buy the food from them, but it's basically powdered food, right? It's basically like the shakes diet, whatever that milk, sh not milkshakes, protein drinks. It's the drink diet, you know, thing I'm talking about. Uh, but they have like different things. They have like a chicken soup, a vegetable soup, and then they have a strawberry chocolate, vanilla shake, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and she likes that diet. We did it together before. We stayed on it for, I think, about a month. And, I mean, you lose weight. You're, only, you're It's liquid. <laughs> you're not chewing a thing. Um, but um, we did it for about a month, and then I just went crazy. I couldn't handle it. Uh, it worked really well for her, so she's trying it again. Uh, you have to pay for it. You have to buy the food. I think in the long run, though, it probably works out cheaper because you're you're not buying food. You're only buying that. Anyway. She did that. I'm uh, just trying to be more mindful because, you know, I'm gaining weight. So I'm trying to be more mindful now. And I think my big issue is eating late at night. So I'm trying to get a grip on that. I've also noticed something. I think, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think as I'm getting older, I think I've become gluten intolerant. Or, or maybe, maybe I don't fully understand what that means, but like yesterday for lunch, I had a hankering for a sandwich. So I went to uh, Subway and I got a sandwich. And within half an hour of eating the sandwich, I was at home and I fell asleep. <laughs> I mean, I literally fell asleep. And that's happened a few times. And I, I've been trying to piece, I'm not very aware, body aware. I don't kind of feel things. I don't know that I feel sick until I feel healthy. And then I'm like, oh shit, I was feeling sick. You know, I'm that person. But I think I have noticed over the last couple of years that um, white bread makes me fall asleep. I get like wicked tired afterwards. Um, not all carbs and not all bread, specifically white bread, like the Subway kind of thing that's barely bread. It's just sugar and yeast, you know. Um, like I don't get it if I eat sourdough, I don't get it if I have wheat, but the problem is I love bread. I mean, it would be, if I only had one food for the rest of my life, it would be bread, but I've got to stop eating it. I've got to end it. So I'm going to do that on the diet as well. So no more bread. I'm just going to stick to, uh, it's effectively whole 30. Um, in fact, if I went fully whole 30, I'd have to cut out soda, which is the other issue. And I don't know how to do that. It's, it's harder than smoking. You know what? It's fucking harder to quit Diet Coke for me than smoking. This shit is real, man. That shit is crazy addictive. Anyway. So I started on my diet again. Saying this every fucking log. You can go back through all of my video logs. And every 10 logs or so. I started on my diet. Anyway, I'm giving it another go. Alright, the debate last night. So I didn't make it through all of it. Laura made it through a little bit more of it. Uh, but I just kind of noped out of it because there was a point where Susan, I can't remember her name now, the, the moderator, Susan, whatever her name was, she asked a question about how the two presidents, the two candidates for president are both old. Trump would be 74 if elected again, and Biden would be 78. 77, 78, I think 78 when it, if elected. So she asked a question like, what were you, have you talked about this? What, what does the campaign have an approach to this? Do they have any message to the public? I'm paraphrasing, but you know, that was the question. So the f question first went to Mike Pence who completely ignored the question. He just said, I'd like to go back to a different point. And he went back to, I think it was about the coronavirus. Um, so he completely didn't answer the question. So I thought, okay, well, that's gonna be a point to Kamala, right? And then they go to Kamala. She completely didn't answer the question. She then went on to tell us about her mother, which I've noticed happens a few times. Like it happened during the DNC as well, where she's telling us about how proud her mother would be and how hard her mother worked. And here's the thing. I don't know if I'm a bad 
I don't know if I'm the only one who feels this or not, but I don't give a fuck about her mother. I don't. I don't care about her mother. I'm happy for her if she genuinely had an upbringing she looks back on pride with her mother. I'm sure she does, right? So I'm happy that that's her story. But we're voting for you for vice president. Why are you telling us about your mother? That's just an irrelevant point. You know, Mike Pence is a robot, right? And and it's almost soulless what I see in him. It's this weird, very practiced um, pre presentation that he puts out in front of the people. I mean, like, you know, flies land on his head and don't move. Like, the dude's a fucking robot, right? But he's, and he's practiced. And I thought that would be somewhere that Kamala Harris could win. But actually what happened is she had no context either and, or no content. At least in what I saw, maybe it got better afterwards. I just couldn't handle it anymore. But also she came across as really smug. Like she just kept looking at him with the raised eyebrows like, oh my God. And really dislikable. Like, it just again reminded me. I think Pence won that debate from what I saw. That's the point. And Pence won and they both are fucking useless and had nothing to say. And Kamala Harris might be great for all I know. But what's the messaging? What are you going to do? Like... Why couldn't she say to the public, which is, I think, regardless of who you are, whatever side of the party you're on, whatever, whatever, you're Democrat or Republican, what I think pe people wanted to hear her say when the moderator said, have you guys discussed about Biden's age, was her to say, yes, we have. We have a plan in place. He's very healthy. We don't think it's an issue. But yes, we have because we're prepared people and we like to think about the future of this country rather than just wing it and, and feed you BS. That's what we want to hear, isn't it? Isn't that what we want from a politician? Why is that such a bad message? I think they're so over-strategized, these people. They have so many campaign managers, strategists, market analyzers, demographic um, representatives. Like, there's so many people involved in this clusterfuck process of electing the next government that they have lost the fucking plot. They have forgotten what it is that we want to hear. And I noped out of it. I, like, I was like, yeah, can't, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing it. I have to vote, and I have to vote a particular way this year. It's very important and to me. And But I don't need to listen to this bullshit because it's irrelevant. Because I'm actually not voting for what I think is the good of the good, a, a better future for this country. I'm voting to avoid disaster. And I know we kind of say that in a lot of things. We said that with Hillary Trump, Hillary Trump, uh, the Clinton Trump. We said that with so many of the elections in the past. This one, I genuinely think this is, in this situation, I am voting to avoid disaster, right? Uh, and to avoid some very, potentially very dark consequences. And the Kamala Harris thing last night just reminded me of what the problem is, the problems I have with the Democratic Party and the problem I have with American state of American politics. It's just no one likable. There's no one trustable. There's no one believable. You have the choice between a megalomaniac and a robot and uh, an old man tugging on your heartstrings and someone who wants to tell us about her mother all the fucking time. Like, oh. I don't know, does anyone else get frustrated by this shit? Well, I know we do, this country does. But then I saw an article that said, you know, who won the election and these the, the debate last night, and they asked four Americans, and the Americans said, you know what, America did, it was civil. Yes, it's good that it's civil, but America did not win that fucking debate. We lost again. We're just settling for crappy politicians. It's just awful. Anyway, that's it. All right, I'm going to work on my game today. I had this game that I publicized. I haven't done any blogs about that. Fuck, you know what? I'm going to do one right after this. I'll make this one quick. If you want to hear about my game, watch the next one. Because uh, I had a lot of content and it was a difficult journey and I haven't finished it. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it. And I think I'm going to work on it today. Anyway, if you want to watch it, watch the next one, which will be up in a couple of hours or so. Right, you little nuggets.